Humans have been forging metal for thousands of years, from smelting to crucibles to forging weapons that would change the course of history and the aesthetic of life, from architecture to music and even jewelry. Forges have advanced in size, heat, and technology. Smelting and forging metals is the most powerful alchemical and magical mechanism demonstrated by humans in our known history. In these early depictions of forging, the artists portray a forge and its heat as if it is light from heaven itself. Hephaestus was the Greek god of forging. He supposedly had 20 bellows and he created the magical weapons and tools that you hear of in mythology. I think he would be proud of us in the way that our technology is advanced. I'm not sure if he would be proud of what we're doing today. All right, let's make a single brick forge. First, you need a brick. This is going to be called a fire brick, a refractory brick. It's basically made out of silica. They have a bunch of different properties. The temperature that they can withstand, uh, and also if they have any thermal conductivity, which we want, because some fire bricks are for merely withstanding and keeping that heat from going to the next object. We want this brick to heat up. It's going to be part of our forge. The brick I used in this video is no longer available. So there you see me looking up another brick and there's a review right there. Great for modern shopping that somebody used this product, the same needs that we're looking for. You really want to find that. This max temp is a little bit low. It's lower than the brick that I used, but that's fine. Check out those dimensions. Back in the day, 12 years ago maybe, when I made my first forge, it was thicker than 2.5. Now I can't find any that are like that, so you just kind of have to deal with that. With a 2.5 width, I wouldn't go any larger than a 1-inch diameter paddle drill. That means that the opening and first chamber of our forge is, is an inch in diameter, and I wouldn't recommend any smaller either. I'm using a used paddle bit. This material is extremely soft. Don't break your bank trying to get a really nice paddle bit. So we're going to go in about two-thirds of the way in, as deep as this paddle bit will go. I'll then connect the back of that chamber with a regular drill bit of a much smaller size just to get some airflow going. All right, now that chamber's done. You absolutely want to use two of these propane torches. The entrances will be one at the front, which is pointing towards the back, and one at the back that's pointing towards the front and on opposite sides. I don't remember what size drill bit I used on the back here to connect the chamber, but I ended up adjusting it anyway, and if you're using one of these regular drill bits, you can wiggle it back and forth to make more of an opening to get more airflow in there, which you're most likely going to need. It is easier to get airflow specifically next to your torch tip on those entrances. You can see right there I measured the drill bit size, and it's the exact size of the torch tip, but I ended up opening that anyway because what can happen is you turn this whole forge into an extension of the torch tip and you don't have any fire inside the forge. It's only happening on the outside of the forge or not at all. This is the most creative part of making your forge. You don't want to break your bank with buying really expensive pieces of metal or spend a lot of time fabricating something that's only for a $14 brick that will not last forever. It will crack and it will disintegrate. I'm not sure if I would suggest the route that I'm taking in this video. Uh, that was just the cheapest metal that I could find in the hardware store that would get the job done. I wasn't sure if it was going to be stable enough until the very end. I not only had to add the screws in there, but uh, I had to crimp the metal with some pliers to get it to hold on sturdy enough. I will say that whatever you put on this, it, you just can't grip the brick. It is so soft that it, when it moves at all, it will wiggle itself free. So do your best and have fun. One of the good things about these flimsy legs is that they were very easily adjustable because you want this thing to be even and not rocking back and forth at all. So here you see me drilling the holes I was talking about uh, to get some little screws and bolts through there to try to get it a little more firm. And I won't show you drilling all those holes, but this metal was nice and soft, real easy to get through. It didn't even have to clamp it down. For some reason, I just don't have footage of drilling the rest of the holes and doing the crimping of the metal. But there you see it when it's finished. 
you can see I put all the little bolts and screws through there uh, and those crimps that I was talking about that you see on the side and on the top I just took some pliers stuck it in there and that made it like the extra last firmness that I needed to have confidence to go start a 1500 degree fire in my backyard so there's one more look at it as you can see my two side holes there's one at the back that's facing towards the chamber which is the front which you see right there and then the one on the right is is angled towards the back so that there's some kind of like cyclone thing happening we're not worried about any kind of crazy shapes or dynamics we just want airflow in there and to have a little bit of a balanced heat these knives are so small that you can almost do a heat treatment with one torch and no forge but it's not quite enough now if you have a bunch of money I assume you're you're not watching this video or trying to make a single brick forge and keeping with making a cheap forge the propane or whatever kind of torch you're using the attachments and the, the pipes and the tubes are really expensive so this is the most basic kind of propane attachment that will allow you to get a fire out of there so the way that you make this safe is you get one of these I think they're usually called woodworking clamps if you have an old one lying around make sure that you have boots on it those little rubber boots on on this clamp they're red they might be yellow whatever the brand is uh, but that's going to be vital in the safety and functionality of this you're going to do a little 90 degree angle clamp and you can put the clamp or vise on its back or front and you should be able to to get a good angle you're going to want to get the whole yard and wherever you're forging nice and wet because if you drop one of your blades it's like 15 1600 degrees it, anything it touches will ignite immediately throughout the forge process when it is lit i keep the hose running and i'll keep a bucket of water nearby you want to be real careful about not putting water on the really hot objects like the forge because it's so hot it's going to have an explosion of steam uh, if you pour that on there. So it's just kind of an emergency if, if, the, if their fire did get out uh, of control. Speaking of some changes of rapid temperature and explosions, you can see here there's a crack on, on the front of the forge there on the brick and it's on the other side as well this will happen usually in the beginning of the forging once you heat up your brick the first time there's gonna be some pops there's gonna be some you know whatever impurities were in there maybe I dropped some crap in there maybe there was something on the, the drill bit who knows but don't freak out if you get a crack as long as your forge is in one piece it'll be fine after making adjustments for airflow on this forge I also was still not getting quite enough distributed heat so just to get a really even temperature, I was needing to get the pliers and hold each blade up to the top of that chamber. My heat was just going to the top. Up to the top of that chamber and, and sway it back and forth a few times, in and out, you'll see there. And you can see it's, it's daylight, so you can't see that great, but it's getting up to that good yellow all across there. I have my magnet over on that little blue vise over there that I kept tapping it on. I will get into the forging process in another video, uh, but I just wanted to show you that this was getting these blades up to a really nice even temperature, critical temperature. And yeah, I mean, I love doing this. It's so much fun, uh, and it, it, it gives me attached to life and to human history and to the elements, and I would really suggest it for anyone. Uh, it is just so cool. When we talk about doing things, bladesmithing is something that excites other people and it is interesting and there's nothing more than I like doing bladesmithing than sharing it with you guys uh, it it really makes all the difference so I'm glad you guys are here uh, if you try this please be safe use common sense do some research and most of all you're gonna want to make a sacrifice to Hephaestus or any of the gods that you choose I'll show you how to do that in another video. Carve safe, guys. <laughs>